now let us go for the current topic really the current topic the post pandemic hyperglycemia which all of us are undergoing morning you had Moses 10 commandments about the DPP4 how he is going to show further into how these medicines can cause macrovascular and microvascular complications thank you chairperson apart from the ill effects of postprandial hyperglycemia one thing i'm very sure is the sleepiness which gives you know particularly the post lunch hyperglycemia <laughs> which we all of us experience In the next 10 minutes i will go through some aspects of postprandial hyperglycemia by definition postprandial hyperglycemia is any blood sugar above 140 2 hours after a meal this is the idf's recommended recommend uh, definition and we all know that uh, postprandial hyperglycemia is important because that's the earliest defect in type 2 diabetes before the fasting goes up it's only the postprandial which goes up and that itself gives rise to a lot of vascular problems so how can we clinically assess postprandial hyperglycemia it's very easy it's simple by a finger stick method 2 hours after each meal if you test your blood sugar it's above 140 it is postprandial hyperglycemia hba1c and fructose amine are not good tests to assess postprandial hyperglycemia if you and you have a access to continuous blood glucose monitoring probably that will be the best to assess the degree of postprandial hyperglycemia after each meal what is the clinical significance of postprandial hyperglycemia why are we all so much worried we all know that uh, in igt the uh, only defect is postprandial hyperglycemia and we know in igt we have also have a lot of macrovascular problems <coughs> occurring then microvascular complications are uncommon as Uh, purely uh, for a postprandial hyperglycemia but macrovascular complications well established and we also know the ill effects of postprandial hyperglycemia during pregnancy so what is the mechanism linking postprandial blood glucose and cardiovascular complications it is said that the spikes in postprandial hyperglycemia causes endothelial dysfunction increases oxidative stress and thrombosis and this could be the repeated postprandial hyperglycemia may be harmful to the endo uh, endothelium what are the studies that suggest postprandial hyperglycemia has got a strong association with cvd this some of the studies are almost 20 30 years old the honolulu heart study showed that as the postprandial blood glucose increases your cardiovascular event increases the decode study again decades earlier also showed when you have a postprandial hyperglycemia your uh, cardiovascular uh, morbidity goes up then the classical Uh, stop NIDDM study, which most of us are aware, I mean, all of us know. This was primarily done to see if uh, I, a carbos uh, drug which inhibits postprandial hyperglycemia prevents the progression of IgT to type 2 diabetes. This was, study was done again in 98, and the primary aim, aim of the study was to see if IgT progresses. The, and is, as you can see, it reduced progression of IgT by 35%. and most important the secondary endpoints were striking in the study showing even use of acarbos you reduce the postprandial hyperglycemia you reduce new hypertension by 34% myocardial infarction by 91% and any cv uh, side effects by almost 49% it uh, <clears throat> clearly shows that uh, drug which reduces postprandial hyperglycemia has a multiple cardiovascular benefits so what do the guidelines say there is a a guideline published by idf way back in uh, 2011 uh, given specifically to manage uh, postprandial hyperglycemia again lifestyle modification is important weight control is important then comes the pharmacological agent what is peculiarity about uh, postprandial hyperglycemia in the indian situation is if you look at this diet for a one meal the <clears throat> postprandial hyperglycemia is highest in the indian meal and uh, indian meal is said to have almost 80% of carbohydrates so postprandial spikes are higher in indian meal so when <clears throat> so it is very imperative that we in india should control a postprandial hyperglycemia to prevent many of the complications of diabetes so what are the therapies that are available there are several pharmacological therapies described in textbook right from alpha glucose inhibitors glyonide short acting insulins and dpp4 inhibitors but the most effective drug singularly to control the postprandial hyperglycemia is your alpha glucosidase inhibitors many of us are familiar with this there are three drugs available the acarbos miglitol and the oglibos and among these drugs drug which has the most 
uh, effective postprandial reduction and most evidence-based drug is probably acarbos, which shows a clear beneficial effect even as a monotherapy drug. Coming to the relevance of uh, AGIs in the Indian diabetic, as I said, the Indian diabetic is rich in carbohydrates. Carbohydrate load determines the postprandial rise. That is important to understand. So how can we reduce that? Only by diet mod modification. The AGIs primarily take care of postprandial uh, hyperglycemia for comprehensive control. It's an important drug, probably a much underused drug in our country. Uh, considering the amount of postprandial hyperglycemia due to carbohydrate intake we have in our country. Coming to the some or newer studies which show the benefits of uh, reducing postprandial hyperglycemia, particularly with the help of acarbose, is this uh, gluco VIP study. It's a multicentric study and it had almost 2,000 Indian patients, uh, somewhere newly diagnosed and uh, somewhere on other oral anti-diabetic drugs and addition of acarbose to these patients and after 12 to 14 weeks they showed a remarkable reduction in postprandial hyperglycemia that means whatever medications your patients are using now still you have postprandial hyperglycemia always keep in mind you have the agis you can use either acarbose or your oglibose to reduce the postprandial spikes in blood sugar which may help in controlling your hba1c also this is yet another study which shows that acarbose reduces the risk of myocardial infarction in type 2 diabetic patients. It's a meta-analysis of several long-term studies. And the mechanism is simple. By just by reducing the postprandial spikes in blood glucose, you are preventing many of the cardiovascular events. This, finally, I come to the very latest study. This is a study from Taiwan, in two, published in 2018 of almost 14,000 patients. It's a retrospective study of over t uh, 10 years from 2004 to 18. They went through the records and seen the progression of patients and two groups of patients. One group of patients were on sulfonylurea of metformin and another group of patients were on acarbose and metformin. <clears throat> and this study show and the primary endpoints were all-cause mortality, ischemic strokes, all were vascular events were studied and this study showed that acarbose as an add-on to metformin was associated with lower risk of major, major atherosclerotic events, ischemic strokes, all-cause mortality and myocardial infarction. Acarbose as an add-on to metformin was associated with greater reduction in risk of hypoglycemia when compared to sulfonylurea and metformin, this is well understood. And lastly, the efficacy of AGIs has been comparable to other OHAs. We are, uh, uh, the AGIs have been, all, uh, I feel, has been the very under utilized an underrated uh, drug, thinking everyone thinks it's a very mild drug which reduces, but uh, has very little glycemic lowering effect, but it's the only drug we have to reduce postprandial hyperglycemia. The efficacy of AGS has been comparable to any other OHAs and could potentially represent a better option for glycemic control in the Asian population for whom rice is a staple food. I think this Taiwan study should hold good for India also, because the dietary pattern of Taiwan and India are almost same, both are rice consuming nations with almost uh, 60 to 70 percent of the intake which is carbohydrates. So in conclusion, uh, before that the RSSDA guidelines which were published in 2015, it is now being updated, 2019 we are having the new guidelines, but this guideline again specifically points out about postprandial hyperglycemia, the panel opined that post meal hyperglycemia is harmful and should be addressed. After metformin, what is the best drug for postprandial hyperglycemia? The first line drug is AGI, then comes DPP4 inhibitors and GLP4 inhibitors. All others are second line drugs. So in the Indian context, even the RSSDA guidelines say to use AGIs early to prevent postprandial hyperglycemia and prevent the complications of diabetes. So in conclusion, hyperglycemia as reflected by HbA1c is a continuous risk factor. We should remember that HbA1c includes both fasting and postprandial. When the HbA1c is high, the fasting is responsible. As the HbA1c comes below 8, you need to target the postprandial hyperglycemia to get it fine-tuned to below 7. If you want to achieve a HbA1c target of below 7, it is imperative that you use, you bring down the postprandial hyperglycemia, otherwise it is never achieved. If HbA1c is less than 7.5 initial therapy should address postprandial glucose. In order to achieve normoglycemia, postprandial glucose must be addressed. So drugs 
working via alpha glucose inhibitors has a great glycemic efficacy in Indians who have high, high glycemic load unlike the western environment. Thank you.